Hey guys, welcome back to Rumorg TV. Executive Editor Andrea Subisati here, and I'd like to announce our new deluxe subscription package. And within this package, you not only get every issue of Rumorg delivered to your door, free shipping, you also get the digital edition on our app, as well as our entire catalog of back issues digitally. And that includes rare issues, stuff that's out of print, all that is available to you with our new deluxe subscription package. So check that out in the link below, and we hope you enjoy this episode. So are you a horror fan? Do you identify yeah. as, a, mm -hmm. yeah? I identify as a horror fan, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a movie buff, you know? Uh, so I like every kind of movie, and I don't think you're a true cinephile movie buff if you don't like horror movies. You know, there's such a big part of cinema history. My older sister rented The Shining when I was way too young, and I had this uh, shock of that movie. So I, I kept, like, visiting that stuff, and I went through a whole splatter movie phase when I was in my teens. And it's such an interesting visual genre i think and and visceral in a way that you you know you your body reacts in a way that very few other movie genres do and also i think it's the only genre where you can go really dark without alienating like everyone in your audience because people kind of expect that you know e even like really downbeat endings or like really you can go deep into very serious themes in that genre because of that. So tell me, why did you choose The Innocence as the subject of your sophomore film? Well, I think I would never have made it if I hadn't gotten kids of my own. It was uh, more about becoming interested in childhood again. have that nostalgic relationship with childhood as many of my friends had that they would constantly reference it I mean when I was a kid I wanted to be a teenager and was teenager I wanted to be an adult and then I didn't look back until I got kids of my own I was reminded of, of what a weird time it is how how different the time it is than being an adult how you just experience the world in uh, in another way you live kind of parallel lives with your kids. At the same time, having kids gives you like moments where you can remember stuff from your childhood, just triggered by watching them. What if a group of kids play together and when they're playing, something magical happens, like something inexplicable. Maybe it would be interesting to make a movie where it's real. That magic between the kids is something real. And maybe something that you lose as an adult, you know, that it's not there anymore the limitless potential of everything when you're a child is also very scary you don't control stuff you don't know what's possible you don't know what's real so tell me about uh, assembling your amazing cast of kids where did you find them and what was the casting process like i ended up writing a movie with four kids and a cat you know and you should never work with with uh, with kids and animals so uh, uh obviously uh, at that point i was in love with the story and i knew i had to do it so but I was naive about it. I knew, okay, we need to take this seriously. And, uh, and luckily my producer, she was on board with that. So we just, okay, we need to use like a big part of the budget on casting. So we spent over a year uh, finding and, and working with the kids and getting them ready for the shoot. So we said, okay, let's just look at, for kids everywhere. And don't care about their sex or ethnicity or anything. Just find the most interesting kids and then we'll see what roles they might play. And we ended up changing either sex or ethnicity of all the four kids. It was two brothers in the, in the original uh, screenplay. And, uh, and the autistic uh, character was a boy of uh, 12 or 13. I thought I might even have to go higher in age, you know, to find someone who could do that. And there was this girl, uh, 10 years old, when she came in, who just wow. had that capacity that we could work with and add layers to something that she already just could do. So uh, hadn't I been as open as the, as the, uh, the uh, 
woman who helped me with the casting uh, challenged me to be, I would maybe have never found her you know, for that role. So, uh, so I think that was the, the key was to just use time and uh, and find the right ones and then when you have the right ones everything becomes much easier and when they came time to shoot they were really really good from the first day of shooting they were just they nailed it you know so you can work with kids yeah but uh, but you should avoid cats if you make a movie they, they they're prima donnas you know they do what cats do what cats want <laughs> So how did you manage to direct the children to embody such sadistic traits? All the characters have both sadistic and not sadistic traits. So I, I think they could, you know, relate to a lot of the situations, even though they seem very cool. But uh, there were some like violent scenes uh, that we were afraid might be traumatic for them to act out. But it turned out that it, what, it, what, those scenes weren't the problem. They, they understood completely what uh, acting was because they've been play acting all their lives. And so they understood the difference between fiction and reality and their character and I mean, uh, and themselves. I mean, the youngest girl uh, who plays the girl Aisha, she was seven and she was like, uh, what's my character's motivation? You know, she, uh, <laughs> So, so, so they were really uh, professional. Kids have such an amazing ability to just uh, go from one feeling to another. So they're not like adult actors who often need to be in the feeling of the scene the entire day you're shooting. They're not like that. They can go, they can switch on and off much more easily. But uh, I haven't let them see the finished movie though. They saw like the first 20 minutes. And uh, could all see each other on the big screen, and then we had to drag them out, and uh, <laughs> and they just try to find ways to get back into the theater where the movie was running. And uh, but they they uh, and then we let them in at the end where they could be see see like the very end uh, and be applauded, and uh, and they love that of course, and uh, and the audience loves to see them. I think the innocence is really going to upset North American audiences. I think it's going to make quite a splash. Do you think this is also true for European audiences? I've been surprised at how shocking some people in Europe find the movie. I mean, some don't. I mean, some like just like teenagers going, oh, cool movie, yeah. Or, or this, and suddenly there's a woman fainting, you know, <laughs> splitting her head open at the Norwegian premiere. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> so, so you, uh, you never know. Uh, what's uh, gonna happen it's a movie people yeah <laughs> it's not happening for real mm. amazing well mm. i love your movies esco this was an awesome interview i'm going to be rooting for you at the oscars thank you really nice talking to you